Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as I said, up until July last year, I worked full time for Oxfordshire County Council, but I retired and I'll go back. I now work on my own, do work for Oxfordshire County Council, and also work for Hannah Reid, which is part of PBA, to advise them on SUD, Section 38, 278, Master Planning, anything else. Great Western Park. This is looking from the main junction on the A4130 up towards the site. Um, because it's on quite a hill, and then it plateaus off, and then runs southwards in a gentle dip down. The only failure on this one is um, Telewimpy. I know there's one of you here. Two. Two. <laughs> Why have a bloody curb? It makes it urban. It could have been, do away the curb, saved yourself some money, straight over the edge into the swale. It would look far more pleasing. Remember for future. Um, yeah, that's just another aspect. There's a roundabout in here. That's ready. There's another a road to go off that way to Valley Park. Another three to five thousand houses. Right. Great Western Park will deliver that. Three thousand three hundred new homes, secondary school, primary schools, three mixed use centres informal open space and formal and playing fields. All of this is controlled through a framework document or documents, there's five of them or six. Chris, the next speaker, worked with me on the design team because in Oxfordshire we decided we would go ahead even though the act wasn't fully in place and we were wanted to teach the planners what SUDS means and how it can affect the layout of all the schemes. Um, we worked on all these very large scale ones. We set up design groups and teams. And then down to the medium size, we did the same. At every meeting, there are the planners there, the developers there, the highways, the drainage people, master planners, landscape and right away because Great Western Park had something like 27 claimed <coughs> rights of way. Um, Taylor Wimpy decided not to go to appeal because of the consequences and accepted them all but we've had to move some of them. Design criteria. It's all got to cope with the standard rainfall plus the climate retaining requirements. It goes to water courses or sewers, so it has to be kept to the greenfield or below, if possible. And we always try and get it below so that we are not causing any further flooding in that Thames Valley area. Great Western Park is only about three quarters of a mile from the Thames, upstream of Oxford. We do not want any more water in Oxford. You know, it's bad enough for a fortnight trying to get in and out. Uh, all, um, all types of SUDs are acceptable in the design work frameworks and the design codes. Nothing's ruled out, nothing's ruled in. Everything is there to be used. There is a lot of interaction, and especially when the design teams with people like Chris, um, when he worked for the other company and now the company, because that's what we want. We want to talk to the consulting engineers, we want to talk to the developers, we want to talk to the planners to get the best development we possibly can. Um, the, the techniques are go down into parcels, because quite often the consulting engineers who do the master planning are not the consulting engineers who do the parcels. In one particular site, Great um, Southwest Bista, it is written into the design code that if you are designing in the parcels, you must refer your design back to the main consulting engineer to make sure that it follows the pattern and that it has the right amount of water going through it. You want to make sure you hold it back, get rid of it as much as possible. 
so you must have. If there is a problem, back to first principles, think about it. Don't just put it into a pipe, don't just put it into a swale or a filter drain. Use a combination, lateral thinking. It works. <laughs> and it also, in quite a lot of cases, lifts the quality of the development. As we said, as the master drainage scheme is being worked up, the decisions can be made under the 1980s Highways Act on what part of that or the 278. Such feature that fall within the highway envelope are adopted as option chair under section 30A as being highway. If a road has a swale beside it and the water from that road goes into the swale, it is part of the highway and will be adopted as the highway. Features outside that pick up other water that flow in, across, or things are deemed to be suds that would be adopted by the lead local authority if there was one in place. Because the act, as our solicitor describes it, is not a skeleton, it's a bag of bones, we can't as yet adopt drainage like that. So she and I got together, we sat down, and we put it into the 106 agreement. So we draw up two plans. One says section 38, 278 adoption areas and adoption features of SUDS. The other one says lead drainage authority adoption, or would be. We want to make sure that's built correctly, maintained correctly, <coughs> so we take a bond under the 106 to cover that. The developer is also then given the option. He can let us do the maintenance of those sub features outside the highway, or do it himself or pass it over to a maintenance <coughs> company. The money he gives us in the bond and commuted sum are ring-fenced. Then, as he does the maintenance year on year, he can draw down from that sum and get his money back. When he's built the stuff, he gets the bond partial release, you know, the 80% as normal, and when he's absolutely completed. So that's how we've got round not having Flood and Water Management Act in place. Um, the drainage officer for Oxfordshire is a chap by the name of Gordon Hunt. He probably would have been here today, but he's on leave. Got to let him have his leave now and again. Um, he sits on the DEFRA body that's been working on the standards, etc. And I keep going in and asking him each Thursday, when's it coming, Gordon? Etc. Now we go on to lessons we've learnt from Great Western Park. This doesn't look too bad. It looks almost like a swale, but it isn't. That's what it really is. That's not a swale. We, what should have been done, as it should have been a swale, and it also, I would recommend that it was turned into a meandering swale. Not sh straight or gentle curve on there, but something that meanders a little bit. Something with shelves in it, dams in it to create ponds uh, uh, to improve the wildlife and habitat, etc. As you can see, they've used preformed headwalls doesn't look brilliant. Try and do something a little bit different. Softer approach to it. This is the avenue. Mm. At the bottom end, it's got a footpath up one side and a road up the other side, and then turns into another road there. The landscape architect for the local authority 
unbeknown to me, wanted this barrel and a curve put along there. On the next slide, double curve. It looks bloody awful. Also, we've got gullies. Why? It would have been far better to concave that, put these trees, stagger them down. There is a filter drain beneath this, but you could have left the filter drain there and had it, as I said, concave, and then had a meandering swale all the way through there. That water could have gone into there. That side's porous. Could have saved the money there and put it back into it as well. It is making sure that whoever does the master planning and writes the design code also backs it up into the local secondary parcel ones. And that hasn't happened. That's a failure at Great Western Park. But it's a lesson that we've learned. This is, again, a bit further up. You've got here and here so the mowers can go on and mow the grass. In this particular case, somebody hasn't worked on the levels properly. You can see the detritus that's built up there because instead of flowing down this way, as it's supposed to be on the hill, there's a backfall into there. Ah, dear, dear, dear. Never mind. <laughs> this is another section. Now, this had a ditch running down beside the hedge. So they basically left the ditch as it is. Instead of turning that into a swale, and meandering it down through here and making it sensible and putting uh, barriers in there, dams, so that you get a cascade effect, which improves the water quality and the rest of it, creates ponds behind it so wildlife and invertebrates can go into there. You see that what they've done, oh well, better put a bit of pipe in there. Pipes are anathema. They speed the water up, deliver it to the point of exit too quickly. Get rid of the pipes, create the swells, the ponds. Try and get as much water above ground, is basically the sentiment. Again, this is porous paved. That could have gone over into there. It's people not thinking. The reason for this is that, as I said, I retired and left Oxford Street County Council last year. But for a year or two before that, they changed the management and I was pushed to one side. And the chap who's now doing that sort of thing isn't a great believer. And he's wasting time and effort. He's only paying lip service to it. He doesn't believe in manual for streets either. That again is that ditch a bit lower down. It is just a ditch. The gradient down there is probably one in 30. So you don't need a ditch that deep. You could go away with something a lot better. The other thing we've done in Oxfordshire County Council, this is a holding pond, as you can see. Beneath it, because we requested that Chris do it, is storage. It stores the water up. Water comes out that pipe into there and into the system underneath. Lower down the hill just here, there will be allotments. That water underneath there will feed to the allotments. Um, Southwest Bista, we've done the same. I worked on the exemplar site for the um, <coughs> eco town at Bista, northwest. And we got loads of this sort of thing. Created, if not pond, um, a crate system to feed allotments that are all the way down the system. We have a lot of muse courts that are very manual for streets. 
and in there got planting boxes. He said, don't plant them. Don't put a tree in there. Let the people who live there utilise them to grow their tomatoes, their carrots, their cabbages, anything. There's also, within these things, rills at uh, South West Bist uh, sorry, the Eco Town. So they can use the water from the rills to feed the, the boxes. There is a, also a hell of a lot of fruit trees planted, will be planted at the Eco Town for <coughs> scavenging. Here's a detail of the pipe coming out and then they need to the system. It works nicely, Chris. The only thing, and somebody has tried with the gabions and the rock, but it could have been done much softer, is the only thing I would say. You know, cut it back, make it look something nice. Because that does hit you in the eye a bit. This is the main drag, comes up here. So Frank Williams Drive. After Frank Williams, of course, who started his car business off in Digcott before he moved over to Grove. When we originally were talking about this, we were thinking of having a pond in here. This is, you see, that's porous, that's not. Why wasn't it cascaded over the edge into a, a system down through there? That would look much nicer. It would have saved some money as well. Again, on the other side, exactly the same. It would also help water these trees. Now, what I'm saying for future generations and the eco town, etc., is where you have areas of grass like this, and you see the hills falling down this way, down pipes shouldn't be put into a sealed system. They should have a shoe on the bottom, out onto a little garden swale. Now come on down here and then drops into either a poor system or into a drain that's tight on the top of the road that goes out to a swale or ditch. Don't waste space. Then the people who live on the estate begin to live and understand what they're talking about, what is around them. Maybe get some pride, because, I, I don't know, Peter, in spot, Scotland they know about swales and bits and pieces. In America, you speak to somebody in Vermont or and, um, across the other side, they all know what a swale is and what it does. We don't in England. Again, wasted space. Porous pavement. And of course, all the driveways have to be porous. It'd be interesting to know how many people have looked at planning permissions for individual car parking bays because its requirement has been from 2008. If there's over four square metres of parking in the front garden, it's got to have planning permission and it's got to be to swales or suds, I should say. Most, as Chris would tell you, we've always tried to work with the developers, with the consultants, and everybody in there to make the system better, make the lift in the quality of the development, making it somewhere you'd be proud to live. It's also, in its past, saved a lot of money. Um, there was one case in um, Bicester, well, they said they'd have to lift the road by a metre to drain it back to the pond. I said, why? Get rid of it. Keep it at ground level. Put a swale on. This works beautifully. At uh, Whitney, Gordon Way, I don't know if it was named after Gordon, but it could well have been. We worked with ACO and put their drainage system in there because it was in the floodplain. If you put a gully in at the far side of the site, you wouldn't have got it into the outfall it had been too low. So we used the ACO drainage system around to uh, a system of boxes and then into a swale and then Madley Brook. But uh, 
That's me done. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope there's going to be a lot of questions at the end. <laughs>